welcome to an episode of the WIU podcast. Twice. And we're off. Hello, everyone. Welcome to an episode of the WIU podcast, hosted by IUP's radio station, 90.1 WIPFM. Before we start, let's go around the room, introduce everyone. Uh, let's start with the man on my left. Um, I'm Logan, aka DJ TK. I do BPM Tuesday nights. Oh, we're going. Right. Why did you start with him? I don't know. To... I, I don't. That's know. why I was also table. confused. Yeah. Yeah. I am Walker yeah, you know. Ford. I am what? What am I? Producer and grandmaster creator of this podcast. Yeah. This was my brainchild and my mm, kind of. It was a child, I guess. I am host of <laughs> Progressions from six to eight on Fridays. Uh. And I do other things here too. No, <laughs> oh. I'm a Lucy Kitchen. Uh, I host Sports Talk Live on Wednesdays from four to five here on WIPFM ninety point one. And uh, glad to have the podcast back up. Yeah, and I'm Steve Farrell. I'm the station manager of WIPFM, and I'm the host of the Thursday Median Mix from two to four. So I'm going to take a brief moment to reintroduce what this podcast is. It's a podcast where we talk about pretty much anything that involves entertainment sort of as a whole or is relevant to us as college radio station students uh this used to be an audio only but now it's video and you know and it's kind of an incentive for us to make the station look pretty which we didn't really do today no i am our cleaning so, lady was out she was sick i am the fact checker is the way we call it now so i have a computer here for which if you ask <clears throat> me to fact check check a fact for you i can do that and as in addition to that, uh, the way we do it now is each person has a topic. We're going for thirty minutes, and we got our sweet little clock there with the crusty dollar bill on top of it. And it's a so, nice uh, dollar bill. It's simple. it's really not. It feels like sandpaper. There is a bad <laughs> story is. behind that dollar bill. Wow. I found it on the ground, and it was like wet and like covered in salt. There's a lot of sorrow and behind that dollar bill. <laughs> I picked it up without thinking, and then I'm immediately like, "This is disgusting." But then I didn't want to be the person who was throwing money on the ground, so I kept it. You know, I would feel bad too. Yeah, no, like, I'm like, I don't want to be that person. Like, somebody like, came through here and was having a bad right. enough day that they're just like, ugh, no dollar. And now it's disgusting and kind of embarrassed to spend it. I mean, it's just... All right, let's let's move on to this uh, this actual podcast. Who Who's going first with their topic? Oh, sure, I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> just side-eye, everybody. Side-eye, Malusi. Um, so... Uh, my topic is about college tuition and actually has something to do with the Pennsylvania state, um, budget. I don't know if you guys are aware, um, but I believe it was about two weeks ago that students from different, uh, universities across the Pache school system gathered at, uh, uh, was it, I believe it was Harrisburg and they petitioned to have the state give more money back to the major schools because if you're unaware um they have cut the pennsylvania state school budget uh ever since 2012. um so schools have had to reduce certain programs uh here in pennsylvania as far as i'm just talking about our our college university wise and um it's a big deal because it also it it affects future students it affects us now and um you know with as with as much as college tuition is steadily um raising here in America, it's getting harder and harder to, to pay back student loans and all, all this type of stuff. So um, just something really, and, and I think a, a very interesting, like what I want to start off with is, um, I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm sure it anyway. Uh, IEP is switching from a flat rate uh, tuition system to a per credit uh, system this coming uh, fall. So. And for those who don't know what that is, a flat rate is you pay a set amount for the semester and you're good. But uh, per credit, you're paying, you know, per credit. That means per class. So if you're taking a three credit class, you're you're paying more, obviously. Is that actually happening? Because I know last spring we were sitting around like coming this fall is going to be oh, per credit. Yeah. No, the reason I know is because they delayed it. For, for this year. So, um, and that's, that's what you're uh, saying. They delayed it. Uh, they, it was actually going to happen this fall, 
but they couldn't, uh, they either couldn't like pass the bill in time or there were some disagreements. So they delayed it uh, for uh, this year and it's going to start up um, next year. That's interesting that they would cut the funds to colleges. <laughs> I'd never heard. Because you know you hear about music programs being cut in like high schools or elementary schools. I've never heard at the collegiate level money being taken away. I, I find that very uh, ridiculous and uh, kind of upsetting. Because I'm not a very political person, but my stance is like education is number one. It's the number one way to solve a lot of you know social issues that we're facing, and you know. Education is the, you know, foundation for the future leaders of not Civilized only the country society. but the world. So why, like, other than for pure greed, why would you take money away? There's no logical answer. Well, do we know what the money is instead being put into? I do not know. Because, you know, if it's something like physical infrastructure, like repairing yeah, roads and doing... Not work on the turnpike and stuff. I mean, while it's not on the same level as you were describing your beliefs about education, there's still a lot of necessary statewide mm. departments, agencies that need really big budgets. And then I guess for the government, it comes down to more who's a moneymaker. That's true. That's true. I was sort of, I went off on that tangent, uh, not for just this specific case, but sort of anytime I hear a story like that, that's just kind of what I think of. But yeah, no, that does make sense. If it is infrastructure, I'm, I'm hoping it is. I'm hoping it's used for something practical, but like more stadiums, more stadiums, <laughs> more, more. Football. Everyone gets a stadium. <laughs> Let's build radio stations. Yes. That'd be amazing. Hey, let's. That would be amazing. Or just replace the like money the our old way, you know? ones that are just barely yeah. functioning all throughout the country. Kind of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, do we know what the rate per credit is going to be? I don't think they've put that out yet either. Okay, because um, I'm guessing it's just going to end up being more expensive. Than... I've looked. I've looked on um, the IUP website. I've tried to find different stuff around the Pennsylvania State website, and um, the articles are very shaky. And very vague mm. with what um, specifically they're going to do, and uh, I just don't want to throw random, you know, nonsense out there because I don't know. Yeah, so I'm not going to say, you know, I'm not going to lie to the people and be like, yeah, I know. No, I don't. I yeah. honestly don't. So as all of us are sort of getting to that point or on our way out, is this going to have a huge effect on us, or is this more of? I think it's going to have a it's it's going to have a huge effect on anybody going to college. Uh, future student because the 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 thing with the change from the flat rate to the per credit is is that you know you're gonna actually actually stay in school longer because you're paying more money for so if you take say for example if you take like 12 credits um next year right for the fall when they if they if they do implement this system um you're paying more money if you take like 16 credits which means you'll actually be more in debt than um, because you're taking, say if you're, if you're like, you know, a double major and you have to take 16 or 17 credits, uh, you're paying more money during that semester than you probably would in like a whole year in the flat rate plan. So, and if you take 12 credits, that's less money that you have to pay, but you'll be in school longer because you'll be taking the most, like the minimum amount of credits. You understand what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. <clears throat> so it's a big issue because it's going to determine how much money you're going to have to take out if you're able to uh, receive financial loans or however you like get your money to, to uh, afford college for futures. It's not necessarily going to affect us because we're going to be on our way out soon. Um, but for future students coming to to schools here in Pennsylvania, college universities, it's going to definitely affect how people um, come to college. I, I, I would say come to a certain college. Is this every state school that's enacting I, I, this? I, yeah, I think policy? the, the fourteen Pache schools. So like, mm. uh, like IUT, Westchester. Yeah, Westchester, that type of stuff. Is Temple a state school? I don't know. No, uh, okay. I don't think so. <clears throat> It'll be interesting to see. The only people I could really see liking this change would be people coming into their final year, 
because they're pretty much done with the number of classes they have. So when this system's implemented and they're only paying for those few classes and they're being charged mm. then the less than the freshmen who come in and are taking like 18 credit semesters. But even then, I'm still not sure it's a great system. Could this like be affected by like, because we're just about to elect a new president. Yay. But well, it, could that like, could that have a huge effect on this whole thing happening? Um, I think that would depend on the presidential candidate does get elected because all of them have different views. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's my, like, that's yeah, my question. Uh, yeah, like it, it could definitely, you know, tie into the whole presidential election. You know, you got Bernie Sanders saying that he wants education to be free, but then you have Donald Trump saying, you know, oh, education is, you know, for this people trying to kick people out of the country and stuff like that. So wow. it's a lot of different stuff. And, you know, I think that, you know, whoever is the president uh, in the near future is going to have to tackle this issue this issue of education because just even if you look around the country, like colleges are becoming more and more expensive to even afford. And then on top of that, financial uh, aid and loans, people, you know, they're not trying to give more money to, to, to more people. So it's becoming harder to afford to pay back these loans that you're already in debt for. So... If I'm paying more for a semester, say I'm doing a 15 credit semester, mm -hmm. it used to be flat rate, but now I'm paying per each of those credits. Is the institute that I go to going to be getting that extra money or are they getting the same money, the same amount that they would have gotten from me at a flat rate and then all the extra is going to the state? So are you asking that if you're paying, if like where's the extra money going? Yeah. Correct? Yeah, who's going to be getting that large increase of money i'm 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 not sure it's i mean it, it's it's i'm not going to claim to know even anything about the solar system but it, if this is a state, state thing right yeah so wouldn't i imagine they're prob the state's probably getting money i could be i mean as in I though mean? you pay tuition to iup you don't yeah. pay it to the state of pennsylvania no but this this thing though yeah the per credit this could yeah. be a reason why i don't know <laughs> i don't know anything about this 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 is I'm out of my. I'm out of my. <laughs> I'm, out of my so I'm, I'm out of my. I'm out of my depth. I'm. I'm totally useless to any of you right now. <laughs> That's great. If you ask That's me, to, so if you ask me the date when a movie comes out, though, I can. I can Google that like that. Yeah. Ask me when Speed and, came out. Well, the only reason I. The only reason I knew about this is because I'm an out of state student. So like this is potentially. Where are you from? I'm from Hagerstown, Maryland. So I get. I pay that. the same as yeah. an in state student. So when I was looking at this, I was like, oh, crap. Like, this is important. Because, <laughs> you know, I, I come here on um, financial financial loans and stuff like that. So, like, this this is a big deal. I mean, it's not because I'm, I'm graduating. So it's not going to be a big deal. But, you know, it was, especially since last minute we're talking about implementing the system this year. But since they delayed it, a um, whole other different issue. But Well, we'll yeah. get to that when... Well, we have to get it. But, yeah, uh, for me as a cross student, that bridge when we get for me there. as a student, I see that's a bad thing. But at the same time, I would say I need to see where that money is going to be going. Yeah, because if it's no, I agree. going to something that really needs the money, or even if it's going back into the school system, I guess I'll pay more <laughs> so that yeah. Pashi schools across the board are getting more money per year. All right, well, we started out on a real mm -hmm. exciting, humdinger, yes. yeah. positive topic. She probably went with uh, Steve first. I know his uh, is exciting. You wanna, do you, you want to go with mine yeah, next? Let's go, let's go okay. ahead. Uh, mine is less uh, important in terms of our no, it's not. futures. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> not. Sorry. According to Kanye. Uh, yeah. Invest in his ideas. I don't know if this piece of news came out today or yesterday, but essentially Kanye West was caught using the torrenting site Pirate Bay to download a uh, producing software. And what is ironic about this is uh, he was considering filing a lawsuit against Pirate Bay because so many uh, people out there were downloading his album, were torrenting his album through the Pirate Bay and not buying it through his website or through Tidal, which are the only two avenues in which you can buy The Life of Pablo, Connie's new album. And uh, I think it's super ironic um it sounds like one of those stories that's too good to be true i feel like it's a stage below that where it's just well, right enough it's just 
I it makes so much sense. I think if you're using the phrase too good to be true and Kanye West in the same sentence, that just, it doesn't, that doesn't work. We shifted it's gears always, so hard. <laughs> every, everything that Kanye does seems like it should be one of those too good to be true things. Yeah, but, but it's Kanye West. So nothing is more actually yeah, insane. But when you talk about that kind of stuff, it's usually just like this delusional, like self-motivation, self-serving stuff. This was just a genuine, the reason he got found out was he posted a screenshot of his desk, of his you know laptop screen, he posted a desktop, shot of that to Twitter because um, the page itself was a, a video of uh, Sufjan Stevens. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. The reason he got found out was Pirate Bay was open in another tab. <laughs> That's how he got found out. Like, he didn't close Pirate Bay. You would think he would do something so like that. So it's, it's just is. like, it's not typical, like, oh, Connie's, Connie's crazy. Oh, Connie's so ridiculous. It's just like, he just made a dopey mistake like that. And it's just like, it's just so funny to me. It just I I enjoy that someone who boasts boasts like as much as he does did something that foolish. And I mean, it's just, it's just adding to the legacy of how crazy he's going. Yeah. So yeah, I don't think there's anyone who would disagree that Kanye West is a pretty rich man. Yes, <laughs> and well, Kanye would. <laughs> I mean, Apparently whatever. He's like what, like fifty. That's his businesses. Yeah. Oh. Personally, he's he's doing pretty okay. So, so, on the other end of that, I would not consider myself rich, and I have torrented stuff, not because I wanted to deny money to the creators of the content, but because I didn't have the money to spend for it. That is a very valid reason I can. So. That. I know I'd seen online about this. Someone said whatever it was that he torrented sells for like $184. That's like chump change for a yeah. guy like him. Yeah. He, he could have spent two grand in like a day. He could have like gone to the company and just traded them a pair of his sneakers in exchange for their software. Or just one of his $250 white t-shirts that he sells. Wait, what? He oh well this is like last year but he has a line of clothing one of the pieces of clothing is a white t-shirt and it sells for roughly two hundred two fifty dollars nobody's like nobody's bought that that's right? not true he what? has a Yeezy season collection yeah. season three yeah actually season that's three. where he debuted like yeah. Pablo yeah it's not it's, they're not on season one they're on season yeah. three and like his yeah. and he I remember he said in an interview that he doesn't want his clothes to be you know more than like. Two hundred fifty dollars. Like he wants them to be below like an average person. Guy. But the thing is, Kanye, FYI, nobody around you is average. Yeah, really. Like, yeah, he's just surrounded by yes I don't men and Kardashians. Yeah, I don't understand how he can like. Yeah, like I'm for the average people, but you, like you yourself, are surrounded by millionaires who spend fifty grand on like a fur coat. Like all, yeah, all this. I know people who make fifty grand for a living. All, yeah, <laughs> like all of this delusional stuff he's been doing, or like noticeably more crazy stuff. I think it's all just because he's just surrounded by all these music industry executives and all these businessmen and all these yes men, and he just doesn't have any sort of grounded, realistic person saying. Just giving him good advice rather than just being like, "Oh, that's good. Yeah, do whatever you want, Kanye. Like, just do it." He's he like a child it. star. Yeah, that's like what he raised is. Raised in like this area, but he's an adult man still. Well, I don't yeah. know about functioning in society, but at at this point, it's like all of the crazy stuff he does. Whenever he's in the headlines, that all of that stuff is just bigger than his newest album. I was expecting yeah. some crazy. I I don't know what I was expecting with Life of Pablo because I just kept hearing all this different stuff, and oh, he changed the track listing. And he changed the title a bunch of times, and he can only get it through title, and he can only get it through him. I was expecting something like far out crazy, and it was getting all these polarizing reviews. I'm like, oh, dude, what does this thing sound like? I have no idea. It sounds okay. It sounds yeah. like a chill version of Yeezus, which is at best a pretty okay album. Hey, what? Steve, how'd you listen to the Life of Pablo? <laughs> we torrented it. Yeah, we did. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, we torrented it like the fiends we are. You, mean you didn't join the Almighty Title Cult. I hate title. <laughs> That was such a joke. So, <laughs> what is? Do we know like the exact software? It's called the, Serum. It's like yeah, synthesizer I had a, do we software. Know, do we know who makes it? 
we could look it up because under like the idea of technology rules they could now legally go after him and say content he created that used their product is theirs that's very true that is uh, yeah so if he was producing like T-Lop using that software <laughs> they could go after big court and say no nope, this is our album <laughs> But then he can. We just, get all the money. We get all the revenue. We need all the money you have right now. But yeah. then he can. He can just call up Mark Zuckerberg for some muscle, and then they can Invest join forces. Or just go to his super rich wife and be like, "Hey, can yeah. I get all the money from like reality show?" Yeah. Of like, I, aren't they divorcing though? I'm I don't pretty, know. I think oh they yeah, are. we were walking through Walmart. Kanye and Kim? See, all right. Yeah. I if they divorce and Kanye becomes more like normal and like grounded and releases like a genuine, just good He's album, got album just a good summer. piece. Yeah. Yeah. He is. Turbo Graphics Whatever. 16. Turbo Graphics 16. Sounds like anyway. a video game in like the 1990s. Yeah. Or Whatever. it was going to be coming out. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> that's what it is. It's not even an album. He's going so next level. It's a 90s video game. I have no idea it was going to be coming that. out until people saw the program that he was using to produce it was. Yeah, who knows? Or it did, so now it's never going to release. Who knows? Ooh. Yeah. Have you listened to Life of Apollo? I know you have. Yes, I have. What do you, what do you think of it? My whole take on this album has been lost in the controversy that is Kanye West. Yeah. His tweets and like, and I totally agree with you 100% when you said that. Uh, and I, I forgot, oh man, I was talking to a friend of mine and I said, Kanye makes, to me, I, I think Kanye still makes great music. But the thing is, his message gets lost in the way he uses his words. And, um, you know, all this whole stuff with, you know, arguing with Wiz Khalifa and the waves and, you know, yeah, I, I, it's 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 stupid. Like you're a grown adult and you can't handle yourself. Uh, you just feel like you can say anything you want. Well, FYI, Kanye, like you're not the most important per person in the world. Like, you know, I know you got people that kiss your ass all day and really want to make you feel good, but like, well, Lucy isn't one of them. Like, I don't like. I I I personally I feel like the album is okay. I think everybody's just hyped up just because it's finally out. Yeah, I think the hype of the moment has really got people. Uh, not really listening to what he's saying because to me, like, uh, good Kanye was gone after like 2010 when he, like, Dark Fantasy. Yeah. From any, anywhere to me, anywhere, but beautiful, my beautiful, dark, twisted fantasy, like, backwards, like, from his first, what was that, five, five albums? Amazing. I honestly was like, this guy's a creative genius because every album was different. Every album pushed the envelope and it was about the music. But now he's more in the headlines for, you know, calling Wiz Khalifa, you know, yeah. a punk and, you know, insulting other he people. He gets so insecure punk. when anyone's ever, when everyone, when anyone ever disagrees with him or has some dissenting opinion about him, he just, he just goes on Twitter. And I think that's just artists in general, like a lot, of, and that's hip hop especially, because it's just like, mm -hmm. they're so fragile with their egos. They think you're supposed to like everything that they do, but like. I remember when I don't know if you guys ever watched like the Breakfast Club. Yeah, with yeah. Charlemagne the God sometimes. and Charlemagne the God sent out the tweet. Uh, Fabulous released a mixtape called Summertime, like Shootout Two. Then Lil Wayne released a mixtape called No Ceilings Two, and Charlemagne tweeted. I remember he was like, "Why would I listen to Lil Wayne's No Ceilings Two when Fabulous just released Summertime Shootout?" And uh, Lil Wayne's friend and manager, or friend and like uh, President uh, Mac Main tweeted at Charlemagne the God again. It's like, well, why are you talking all this, you know, crap? It's and, you so know, petty. A war of words. It's and it was so just petty. like, he said his opinion and it's freedom of speech. Like if you can't, and Lil Wayne, FYI, your stuff is trash now. Like, oh yeah. It's it been is, trash. It is garbage. And I don't know why he's probably, does he have a good album? Not at all. Not at all. But the thing is like, you know, these, these rappers like egos are so fragile and like they can't take any type of criticism. You know. That they think that they're just supposed to you, you're just supposed to bow down and be like, "Oh man, that was so good!" Like, no, like it was trash. Go back and work on your bars. Kanye had like <clears throat> a Jumpman response track on the Life terrible. of Pablo. The facts, I believe it yeah. was. What's, yeah. What, which one? Facts. Facts. What is Jumpman? Is that Drake? Drake in a future release of project called "What a Time to Be Alive," and the signature track was Jumpman, which is an ode to the Air Jordan uh, brand. Okay. So, and he made like an entire anti Nike pro Adidas song plugging his company I and even, his line and himself. That's, yeah, of what, did, what did Adidas do for him? Because I'm, I'm at this point, and I'm didn't he quit Adidas? 
That's Didn't he like leave Adidas as well? I'm pretty sure. I'm like, just going through his Twitter right now, and at one point he's like, "Thank you, Adidas, for supporting my did creative, you see, the creative vision." Did you see how he like loved Will Ferrell for a little bit? Oh yeah, he said Will Ferrell has become like a living, breathing, walking god on Earth or something like that. <laughs> and then there's another one where it's like, I think it's like just saw Zoolander two for the second time. Oh it's no, it's something like that. Oh no, it's some like random ass movie he Not saw Zoolander twice. Two. Yeah, uh, so he and Adidas are business partners. Yeah, anyway, Life of Pablo, it just it I had no I had no real opinions on it. I liked Wolves. I liked uh Real Friends. I love that song. I liked the last song. I liked how it had a cool sort of Michael Jackson, Billy Jean beat to it. Everyone would always lose their minds over ultralight beams. I thought it was oh, okay. Yeah. It's pretty good. Everybody likes famous too because of the Taylor Swift. Oh one. yeah, that's that he, that's a whole. I thought was whatever. so funny. <laughs> it was pretty funny. It was. A, I thought it was pretty. Some funny. of the lyrics are pretty. Pretty Kanye. Pretty. Yeah. I, I would say sub Kanye. There is a lyric involving a GoPro. I won't say it. <laughs> I, we all know what it is. I've never really listened to a whole lot of Kanye, so this was like my first, like sitting in your house as we're listening to this whole thing. <laughs> what a, like what a first, horrible entry point like, into yeah. a real yeah. time where I you sat might never down listen and to him to again after this. And that's that was uh, there was like one song that was kind of okay. What's I mean, that like? That's like listening to Led Zeppelin re- released an album called Coda after John Bonham died. That's like if you never heard Led Zeppelin and that's the first Led Zeppelin album you hear. What was wow. the What was the song where he was like? Talking about like his brother or something, or like oh, his cousin. cousin. His That's cousin stole his laptop. Real That's friends. Real friends. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. That one was a good one. Well, and for in, a second, in parties in L.A. At the end, he's like he t- he talks about him in a not great light. But uh, for like a second, I thought it was gonna like be reminiscent of like 2007, like graduation. Like I was like when I heard that song, not even was, close. Like, I was like, ah man, like I was excited, but then I heard Life of Pablo, and I was just like, oh. I was disappointed. Oh, yeah. I like normal parties in LA, but that's basically because Ken- Kendrick Lamar is on it. Yeah, like everything he's doing now is just awesome. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's a whole other podcast. Kanye only follows one person on Twitter. Is it, and- is it himself? No, it's it's Kim Kardashian. Uh, that's cute. We need to wrap this up. Yeah, I was about to say. Progressions is coming in soon. We need to push over to... Uh, what, did, what did you have? Did you have anything? I can do mine really quick. Yeah, go um, we got a couple I was going to talk about tech stuff because I was reading a lot of tech stuff today. And specifically, I was going to talk about VR and AR. <gasps> which have been big into the few months we are into 2016 right now. Um, Virtual reality and augmented reality, VR and AR. Virtual is a completely digitally rendered 3D designed world, whereas augmented reality is our normal world, but with like technological overlap on it. Mm. So the only thing really AR right now is currently the Microsoft HoloLens, oh, yeah. which they've just released a developer version of it for people to design gear for, for about $3,000. Like you can buy it as a consumer, but it's really made for people to create content. And the idea of it is just as you wear the lenses, it's like a somewhat big pair of glasses. Okay. But as you wear them around your house or around your workplace, you see windows related things placed around the world like yeah don't you i could to... look over at the wall and there could be the calendar app there like a digital calendar mm-hmm. and it would show anything i've planned for the day or something they talked about when they originally displayed this at the microsoft con last year is because microsoft owns minecraft now like i could be sitting here at this table and see a minecraft block built world on top of this table yeah they did that demonstration at uh e3 didn't they yeah that was like if it ever works that well that is crazy yeah that's obviously the big what it is is it ever going to work that well which is likely probably not <laughs> whatever <laughs> like but, they had to the, the yeah like they the, like they're just it. really starting to get worked on the ar and now they're letting people outside of microsoft begin to try to develop things for it so it's going to be a while before we really see anything from that. But the other one, VR, is looking to be pretty big this year. There are two main contenders for VR content. The first one is the Oculus Rift, which Heard about that is one. shipping out pretty soon. It's $600. No surprise there either. Um, 
what it is, it's kind of different from the HoloLens, the Microsoft AR set, in the sense of it's a rather large, for someone standing watching you wearing it, it's just a really large gray block across your face. Mm. But what's on the inside is two slightly curved little monitors, which for you generate like the real feeling first person. It's I don't like, know, feel for it. It's so it's like how 3D works, where it's like the two different like lenses sort of way, like projecting two images. Instead of having like wear these stupid like glasses and looking at a screen, like you're just actually looking into those two lenses. So it's like 3D in the truest sense is the best way. So I you get to the headset it without, you know, and you get a little sensor piece that you would set on the desk in front of you as you use it, you use it sitting down, and that tracks your head motion and orients. So the in-game world would line up with your digitized headset world. Mm. So there's only a few games out for it right now, but people are liking it a lot. Like it's a crazy immersive experience that you can't imagine until you've actually tried it. There are there are a bunch of safety rules for people not using it, interacting with people who are using it, <laughs> because you can get straight up sick if you're in this digital world and you feel like someone grabbing yeah. your shoulder and shaking you and there's nothing there as far as you know you could get physically sick from that sensation that is terrifying that sounds awful it That's looks terrifying. pretty goofy from the outside too i think my favorite thing are watching people playing the horror games where you don't see their screen you just see them like freaking out as something is happening <laughs> in there and this guy's like flailing his arms <laughs> around and um the other one that's releasing competition is the HTC Vive. That is $800. It comes with motion controllers, which the um, Oculus doesn't. So you get two separate, and it tracks your hand movement as well. So your hands will be moving digitally within mm. the world. And it uses a separate system instead of the table sensor called Lighthouse. So it can actually do full body tracking meaning it can be utilized for you walking around an environment. You don't just have to sit down. I could be walking around my room in virtual reality. So I think this is going to be a big, really big year for tech in those regards. I would love to have a headset, but I don't think I'll be able to afford one <laughs> in this first iteration. There's uh, one that I was just looking at. I don't know where it is. Oh, Samsung Gear. That's only like $99. The Samsung Gear is specifically designed for a certain galaxy phone oh uh, we'll get a galaxy like smartphone. it augments the phone display into a oh, vr experience oh that's cool so it's kind of like the google cardboard except you know not cardboard yeah but nice google cardboard how'd you get that because that's only for androids oh so i think towards the end of this year and going into next year we're going to see a lot more attempts to implement vr and ar into normal almost like everyday life applications because right now it's really for video gaming mm -hmm. but i think there's going to be a bigger push for minimizing the physical hardware so it's less of a big glaring oddity on your face this is going to be such a it's terrifying weird, i imagine this could experiment. it could be used with like uh surgery like they already have like those crazy like super accurate like tiny little like claw hands for like the surgery machines pair those together and bam we're in the future i like it used like that i i get very afraid thinking that everyone's gonna have one of these i don't like the idea of being consumed by technology to the point where you're just like in this other world i mean it's a very sci-fi way of looking at it but i think i always get in the back of my head i'm always like uh oh god Oh no! That's that's my favorite part. That's the that's the part I'm most excited about. As as terrible as it sounds, I'm just waiting for the first person to be like get so engrossed in it that we have like the first like death by VR where this guy gets so sucked into his little world, whatever he's playing. Wait, in this there. is something you're looking you're looking forward to. This it's it's like that step finally where it's like yes, we're in that crazy like sci-fi future. Someone someone. Thought that world was so real that they they died in there. Inception, Wait, man. Which okay, so I yeah, I know that sounds at? terrible. I know that sounds terrible, <laughs> but it, it's. I mean, the, I, there's the not really a whole you, lot of defending myself. The way you phrase it. The way you look at like our P, like this is it. We're in the future. Is it? This is it, like guys. Human death. This is it. He just wants someone to die 
so his name won't be on the headline for first <laughs> VR related death. Yeah, he does. Yeah. That's how I knew we've made then it, guys. Then he'll invest. He'll buy all the headsets. Just do it. He'll do it all the time. Don't let I'll your dreams be dreams, guys. Just do it. Shia LaBeouf. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Shia LaBeouf, 2016. We've gone about uh, our 30 minutes. I don't know what it says on there. Let's see. Uh, 35 minutes, guys. We went five minutes ever. Let's try to never do that again. Never. Except for the next God, time. Never, we'll never. probably go six Crystal minutes clear. Ever. Never, never. Thank you for never tuning again. in to the reboot, so it is, of the WIA podcast with video now. I hope you enjoyed watching me drink coffee and watching Malusi's pretty face. We know uh, we did. Uh, I know. I know I did. I, I was did. direct view. Hey. All right. So uh, see you next time, guys. Yep. See you. Bye. Bye.